Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. Two videos ago, I showed you how easy it is to sync dot files across all of your devices. And in the previous video, I showed you Gwake, which is the top-down terminal of my choosing. But the problem is that neither Gwake nor the regular GNOME terminal store their settings in dot files. And so today we're gonna see how we can work around this issue. I wanna make this video super, super short, so let's get right to it. As in most of my videos, I'm running Windows 10 with an Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine and the virtual desktop feature on Windows gives me a couple of shortcuts to do this. I can go to Windows like this and I can go back to my VM like that. All right, first things first. GNOME-based systems have this thing called dconf, which is a simple key value store. You can think of it as a Windows registry. It's a simple key value store, a simple tiny binary database, which is used to save system settings. And tools like Gwake and GNOME and many others, they actually use this database to manage their settings. You might wonder why it is so complicated all of a sudden, and the answer is, for performance reasons. And also, it's really not that complicated. Historically, these settings were managed in dot .files, and as you have seen two videos ago, there was no standardized format for all of these dot .files, right? So every application vendor came up with their own format. This was later standardized to XML, and all of these settings were managed in this one gigantic XML tree, which was managed by a tool called gconf. It's kind of a slow process to parse and have a growing XML tree, and so now we have the binary version of that XML tree managed by a tool called dconf, which is just a simple key value store. All right, dconf, as most databases store their files somewhere, usually it's multiple files if you have a proper database, but in this case, it's only one file. So if we open the terminal and we go into .config slash dconf and we type in ll, we're going to see a file called user. So if we're going to try, so it's, uh, first of all, it's um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 20k, okay? And if we cat into that, we're gonna see some weird symbols because this is a binary file. Now, technically, you could sync, you know, you could symlink to this file as I, show, as I have shown it to you in the, pre in the two previous videos, uh, but I wouldn't do that. Because, first of all, I never tried this. I'm kind of scared to, to try this whole thing because I have no idea. Like, it, it, ha it has the settings for your, for your entire operating system. Uh, okay, and also the, the other reason is that you know if you're using Git and GitHub, a version in binary files is not that efficient, right? Because you know these these files they don't actually store all the versions of your files; they store only the diffs, and it's kind of hard to diff a binary file. Okay, so these are the two reasons why I actually haven't done this. Uh, we actually don't need to do this because there is a there is a way more um, surgical way to do this, and it's super super simple to do. Let me show you how to do it. All we need to do is we need to find where exactly inside of dconf the settings that we care about in our in our case the Wake settings are stored, and then we're just going to export them into a file, and then whenever we set up a new machine, we're just going to import them. That's that's how easy it is. So dconf should already be installed in your system. Let me switch back to my home directory, and we can do man dconf to to see its manual. And as we can see, it's a it's a simple command line uh, interface. It has just a just a couple of commands that you can do. So obviously you can crowd keys, right? So you can create, read, update, and delete keys. But you also have this concept of path, and you also have a concept of directories and keys. So essentially, uh, both keys and directories they both they sort of like you know, in an object-oriented way, they sort of extend path, right? So they're both path, which which also means that if you're using the dconf reset, which basically is going to remove your your, your settings, uh, it, it can work with both the keys and with the directories. A directory always starts with a slash and always ends with a slash, and a key always starts with a slash, but it never ends with a slash, okay? So you can pretty much, you know, read and write the keys. Uh, you can uh, dump uh, an entire directory, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna find out where, which directory it is that Gwake stores its files, then we're just gonna dump it and then when later we're gonna we're gonna load it that's pretty much uh, all that we need let me press q all right so there's another tool called a dconf editor which is just a gui for dconf and it's not installed by default so let's go and install it real quick install dconf hyphen editor like this okay should be a super simple tool there we go all right so now we can just start it dconf hyphen editor editor like this Okay, so it starts like this, and you can know, you can also make it a make it a full screen. Okay, so uh, you know this is just a tree, so you can navigate it. You know there is org, there is gnome, there is shell. You can click over here, and then it, it shows you the entire tree. It also comes with a search. So there is this um, symbol over here. 
and I can just type in Gwake, and as we can see, there is actually apps Gwake. In fact, when I was playing around, I actually found yet another one. There's there's also one for notifications. Maybe it's because I turned my notifications off. Uh, but you know, if you have multiple, you know, just export into two files. Okay. So what you can do now, first of all, you can go in there and see. Okay, there's general, and there's this is this is like all all of the settings, max tab name lengths, and all of this stuff. Okay. Let's actually go back to. Let's see, let's actually search for Gwake again. Gwake like this. Uh, come on, just go out, go out. Why is it why is it um, stuck over there? Come on, I want to search for Quake like this. Okay, there we go. So what you can do now is you can just right click over here and you can just copy that, right? So it will just copy this slash apps slash Quake slash. So what we can do now is we can go back to the terminal. I'm actually going to close it. We don't, we don't actually need it anymore. Okay, so I can do uh, deconf. Okay, and I can ask it to dump exactly this thing, right? And it will just print out all of these settings, right? So it just export it, uh, you know, from binary into a text, text format, it just dump them all into my terminal. So what I can do now is I can do the same command and I can just pipe this whole thing into a file called my GWAG settings. Okay, so now I have a file called my GWAG settings. It is over there over here notice that we're inside of Quake right now okay so i can cut into that i'm going to see exactly the same thing cool so again notice that we're inside of Quake. so what, what i'm actually can can do now is i can go and reset all of the settings so i can do deconf reset and i need to do hyphen f because i'm going to reset an entire directory i'm going to paste that thing again and it should now destroy our entire quake and it will probably even uh, even be minimized maybe not okay oh i wasn't in Quake. i actually kind of forgot oh man all right, so I was um, over here, right? So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, press LL, right? So it's everything is small, so it just destroyed all of my settings. I kind of wanted to show it to you uh, when I was inside of Quake. Well, I can do it in just a few seconds, okay? So I'm just going to press up, up, up a couple of times, right? So this is where, where we dumped it. So now I can just switch it to load. Okay, so over here I can just do load instead of dump and I just need to revert this arrow, right? So it points to the right, I'm going to point it to the left. I know that it's super small, we're going to do it in just a second again. I'm going to press enter and as you can see, this is what this is my terminal behind the scenes, right? So I'm actually going to close this, right? So it just applied all of my settings. Okay, so let's demonstrate this again. Okay, LL, my file is there. So I'm going to go into a reset, bam, and these are all of my settings, reset, and I'm going to load them again like this, bam, there we go. All of my settings are back you know sometimes you have to press f12 a couple of times but uh yeah that's that's essentially all you need to know so all you need to do now is to create simple scripts that will just remember the name of this key okay so uh by the way let me also show you uh the gnome terminal okay deconf editor um doo -doo 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 -doo. let's also do uh gnome hyphen terminal or maybe just maybe just terminal terminal yeah, there we go. Org GNOME Terminal. This is this is the one, right? And also notice that it also has another one. So what 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 I did was let me show you actually this to you. So this is my Windows again, and I'm gonna open my my GitHub, and this, these are my dot files. So what I do inside of them is that uh, I have a, a folder called okay. So this is dev inside you dot files. This is actually the one that I wanted to remove and I forgot. Um, I wanted to show you my dot files like this. Right, so um, they're not under the organization; they're under Agile still. Okay, so what I do is I have a directory called stove inside of there, right? And inside of it, I'm using you know I'm using the stove command inside of them, right? But everything that I have outside works a little bit differently. So for example, I have this Quake uh, directory, okay? And inside of it, um, I have five files. So uh, the important ones are this one. Uh, so let me let me zoom in a little bit. So I have the export settings into dot .files, right? Dot .sh, right? If you go in there, all it does, it says, okay, so this is going to be a bash script. And then it just does exactly what we just did, right? So it just dumps this apps quake tree into a file called dot .config, okay? And it also does this with some other key with the desktop notifications quake key, right? It, it, it dumps it into the file called dot .notifications, okay? So if we go into import, it's going to do the opposite, right? Import is going to do the opposite. It's going to load, and then these ones are, are flipped, right? And over there are these two files. You know, you have Quake, and you have not, uh, you have the dot .config, and you have dot .notifications. You can obviously call them however you like, okay? So you're going to have config with all of my settings, and you're going to have notifications, much smaller, okay? And there's also a third file. I just 
you know, I just put it in there just because I can. Uh, it's reset settings, right? So this is the one that, that resets them. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So these are all of my dot .files. You can find them at github.com slash agile steel slash dot, dot .files. And, you know, you can use them, abuse them, you know, fork them, do whatever you want. And I'm using the same thing for GNOME Terminal, by the way. If you go in there, it's exactly the same structure, right? So there's export, there's import, and there's reset. And if I go into um, export, I'm going to see that in this case, I'm only exporting only one file. I'm not sure why I'm not exporting this notifications file. I'm going to add this in fact, right? But it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It's just, it's just a different key. Okay. So this is how I decided that I will manage my dot files. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. It's from Vlad, devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on Patreon. But most importantly, take care.